So hello and welcome to this video of Font from Nano Modules. Let's check out what's to come in the video before we get into it. Now font is a 6 HP Yoro rack filter from Nano Modules. We have our audio input, a two-pole low pass and a two-pole band pass output, a CV input for cutoff frequency with an attenuverter, CV input for resonance with an attenuverter, and an octave, volt per octave keyboard tracking input. Of course, we get cutoff frequency controls and resonance controls right there on the module. It sounds great, it does nice deep bass, it's got a good kind of mid crunch, responds well to audio rate, pings nicely, creates a killer kick drum. So let's just get into some patches. So here we'll check out the sound of font. I have a low pitch saw wave, I'll bring that up an octave as well as I do this. I'll sweep the frequency and the resonance, we're currently coming out of the low pass, and we'll also check out the band pass. So here's how it sounds. And as Nick Bat would say, that's really picking out those sing-song harmonics in the input wave there. Bringing the saw wave up an octave. You can hear a little bit of that drive there on the saw. got a good kind of crunch and croak to it. Now here's the band pass. Bringing that down an octave. So that's the sound of font. Let's get into some patches. So let's just listen to this patch for a second before I dissect it. And for a little bit of eye candy, there's the XY mode on the Mordax data. really love this patch. I do make an okay patch every now and then. Now this patch is two layers in my mixer that's been recorded. The first is the low pass output. Sounds like this. And then the band pass output that's going through some distortion, three different delay lines and a little bit of filtering. Let's call it a post-apocalyptic effects line. <laughs> Just distortion and delays all playing off of each other. It's reverberant, but it's dirty and kind of industrially grungy, if you like. Now, I'm using Ma by Nano Modules to mix my audio and also animate the filter, and I'm animating it in various ways. So let's kind of cancel everything out to start with. Here's my input sound. And using the Y side of Ma, which just mixes everything together, I have no level control, it's just kind of summing the inputs. Now I've got four different modulation sources into the X side of the Ma, and if you're wondering why I'm talking about the mixer specifically and what it does and how it functions, there's a demo linked in the description. Now I have my main envelope on this input. This is feeding a fully open attenuverter for the cutoff modulation. I 
have another envelope that's functioning as an accent pattern. So by turning this one down, there's the shorter, sharp kind of accent, playing a less frequent rhythmic pattern as well. So when I mix the two envelopes, say a little bit of this one, you can hear that kind of just chugging away, and then we add the accent. Got this more dynamic two envelope, two different envelope shapes, two entirely different rhythmic patterns. We get some nice dynamic movements. I also have a triangle LFO. And a sequence. So I can mix those together to create some nicely complex modulation. A little bit of the main envelope, a little bit of LFO. It's already kind of feeling like it's pushing and pulling nicely. Accents up top. And a little bit of the sequence as well. Now cancelling this out, I am using the octave tracking for the cutoff as well. Notice that this sound... Kind of nice and grungy as it kind of sounds, being static. I am using my Volt Per Octave sequence into the octave. You can hear that resonance in the cutoff now tracking pitch. So filter tracking, plus two envelopes, LFOs, and a sequence. We've got a nicely dynamic, complex set of modulation from four simple sources modulating font, and it just sounds great, if I do say so myself. I'm really happy with this patch. The final thing to look at is the resonance modulation. I have a divided clock just giving me a gate signal into the resonance. I could be, say, resonant and then attenuvert. Actually invert the signal to inject moments of less resonant filtering. So here I'm using font to make kick drums. Turning the resonance up full, this will self oscillate. I've got the cutoff all the way down and the green envelope on data there is controlling the cutoff. The output is then going into a VCA with a different, slightly longer envelope controlling the amplitude. Simple patch, oscillating filter into a VCA, one envelope to the VCA, one envelope to the filter's cutoff. Now let's just play around with the envelope time and the depth of modulation to the cutoff, giving us this click and punch and kick drum synthesis. So it's just a quick part of the video, but it, it makes a great kick, responds to nice tight snappy envelopes for the pitch really well. And if we open out, say the VCA, let's get some bigger booming kind of kicks. We get big softer booms as well. There's a lot of potential in there crank the resonance, get it oscillating, and play around with envelopes into that cutoff. So in this patch, we're going to use font around a digital effect to create a great analog, nicely filtered, warm feedback trail. Now, before we do that, here's the sound without any added feedback. Let's just listen to it. I'll change the cutoff and the feedback amount, and then I'll go through the patch. And we get some really beautiful feedback trails. 
So my input, completely dry, is this sound. And then here's the wet sound out of the delay. This has been split and I'm bringing it back into the ma, the mixer. So the mixer is a split of my actual input sound and the processed delay sound. That's the process delay level on the mixer. And by feeding this mixer to the input of the delay, that creates the feedback path. And just one more time, I'll bring up that feedback level and just play around with this resonant low pass filtering. Now with any kind of filter demo, I always feel like I should do something slightly acidic, nice kind of resonant envelope lead modulation on the cutoff. Just gives you an idea of the flavor of the filter. Here's a kick and snare, super simple. And then the filter. It just sounds great, really rich, kind of snappy mid-tones. Let's add some more modulation. I've got a different sequence playing to the actual pitch that's controlling my oscillator. And my oscillator here is just a saw wave. But that different sequence, I'm going to plug into the octave keyboard tracking or volt proctive tracking on the filter itself. So by using a different sequence, getting some interesting, more expressive or dynamic kind of movement in the filter, let's blend in some of that envelope on the attenuverter again. Let's add some modulation to the resonance. I'm going to use a gate pattern, and I'm actually going to invert that signal. You can see the attenuverter set to the left there, which will duck the resonance, or will bring the resonance down. It will actually bring the resonance down when that signal is active. So here we're pinging font to create some percussion. Now I'm using random voltages to modulate font and I'm going to add more random voltages and some FM, some audio rate FM to this pinged filter as well. Now to ping a filter is quite a simple concept. We get the filter onto the edge of oscillation, which taking everything out, turning up the resonance. You can hear me right on the edge of oscillation there. There it is oscillating. Well, it's on the edge of oscillation, we take a gate or a trigger, and I'm using this green trace on data, this little trigger to the audio input. And that bit of energy and voltage from the input just pings and excites this nearly oscillating filter. Now the resonance is like the decay or the length of the note, how much energy is in each little hit or strike. From pretty much just letting the click through with a bit of a color to it. We can hear it's changing the tone there. Now here I'm using a random voltage to the octave input, the keyboard tracking. And the random voltage is moving faster than the actual pings at the input. And there's some interesting water droplet and just nice pinged filter sounds. Now I want to push this further with some frequency modulation. And I'm going to put that into the cutoff and use the attenuverter to control the depth of FM. And this is a sine wave from an external oscillator tracking that same random voltage as font. If this wasn't tracking, there's just some static FM but using the same random voltage to both the oscillator modulating cutoff and to font, we get a consistent overtone. So 
So we can use phase tricks to create different filter types where we don't have them. So font gives us a low pass and a band pass, but what if we want it to be a high pass? Well, font won't be on its own, but because its output is inverted, and if it wasn't, you'd just use a simple inverter, you can invert the signal, mix it with the dry signal, and create a high pass. So the actual signal chain here is a saw wave from an oscillator. That's the green trace on the Mordax data. That's coming out into Ma, the mixer next to it from nano modules. That's been split on the blue stackable into the input of font. The output of font is simply going to the data so we can see it, just again a bit of eye candy, and coming back into the mixer. So this inverted filter output mixes with the actual input to the filter and then the mixer itself is what I'm recording. And the way that this inverted low pass blends with the dry signal is what actually creates a high pass like response. Now, if I don't match my levels particularly well, you can hear I get less cancellation. It sounds like a blend of the input and the actual filter sound, but. Getting those as close as we can, this gives us a high pass. So to finish on, let's explore audio rate modulating the filter. Here's a simple sweep without any modulation. Nice resonant low pass and just a saw wave at the input. Now here's a sine wave into the cutoff frequency. And I'll just play around with the rate of modulation and the depth of modulation on font. So you can hear it responds really well and there's some great audio rate overtones. Now let's get the whole thing moving with a sequence to my saw wave at the input, a different sequence to the modulating oscillator, and I'll just adjust the depth of modulation and some of the tuning to get a kind of nice sound out of the patch. There's some interesting FM overtones there on that filter. Let's add an envelope into the octave input. Now passing this into some effects and a VCA, this is just an oscillator into the filter. And we start to build up some really nice overtones by modulating that filter, again, at audio rates. Thanks for checking out this video of Font from Nano Modules. Everything to do with Font is linked in the description below. Check out Ma, the mixer that's been next to the module throughout the video. There's a link to the video demo for that in the description as well. If you like, comment, subscribe, support the work that I do on patreon.com forward slash divkid. Cheers for watching. Have a good day.